What is going on, everybody? Hope you're having a good Friday. I'm Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. I actually had a pretty good night in DFS, which is shocking because I actually was looking and I was having a terrible night. And then all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I was I was I was good because I even I just, my, I just only had 27 hits last night. I think. Yeah, I only had I had I, with a total of four points for my pitchers. I finished seventh in the, uh, the 222, the single entry one. Um, that's my tournament, by the way. If there's a 222 tournament, I mean, this is what I wear on my neck is the 222. Um, thanks to Raquel, uh, but it's uh, the two 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 dot two two. I swear, I I I think I'm I'm like plus like nine thousand ROI on this tournament. I just for some reason I've come in the top ten three times in the last four times I've played it. I've never not cashed in it, so I'm happy that it's all out. It's out there and it's uh it's been good. So ready to get on to another night sheets. How did you do last night? And let's jump into this big slate. Yeah, I did nicely on the Fanduel. I mentioned I was doing the White Sox and the and the and the Red Sox. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and 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 I got the right White Sox. I had Vaughn. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So I did, I did, I don't know, like a 15th, I did something in the, in the, in the big one over there. So that was good. Um, and, uh, yeah, that kind of, uh, you know, kept everything going on for me. Yeah. Um, uh, so hold on a minute. Today, today is May 27th, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I know you got a lot of stuff going on this morning. I know you right. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, uh, get ready for, uh, tonight's slate. I'm ready to go. All right, let's do it. Uh, why don't we pull up your screen and we'll go game by game here and we'll try to do it as quickly and as efficiently as possible because we're running late. Already uh, today. I got I got time. now, So whatever you think. Uh, no, I just I just meant for people to have a chance to watch it even. But but we can do it. Uh, so, yeah, let's, let's pull up your screen and we'll uh, we'll do it as you know, as best we can. Look, if you're going to see it late, I'll be live at six Eastern anyway. So uh, there's that, too. Um, but all right. We got weather concerns in this first game. I am not very interested in this first game. There's a couple of value pieces like Lane Thomas and things like that. Uh, Nelson Cruz, I think, is fine. I'm just going to remind everybody that uh, I don't think Gomber is bad, and uh, he's not pitching in Colorado. He's actually been decent enough even when he's been in Colorado. He'll give up some home runs and stuff like that, but it's not like he's getting lit up. I mean, I think he had five runs in one game this year, but he basically works his way deep into games. Uh, I'm, I'm basically off of this game as of right now. And partially it's because the weather, if the weather is a full go, I will, uh, maybe reconsider, but right now I am concerned about the weather a little bit and it being Washington is always a little bit extra concerning. So, uh, I think that the Rockies would even make some sense here. I just personally would rather stay away. And the weather is a big reason why, but I don't love it enough to where I'm going to, what, what is the weather concerns? Is it rain or is it uh, uh, something else? Rain. Okay. Yeah, um, because that's interesting because I actually did have um, some interest in, in, in the Washington side. Um, mm-hmm. Not my top thing, but but it's certainly in the mix. And I was wondering what had happened to Gomber uh, this season because I remember he had some flashes last year mm-hmm. and I was wondering what ended up happening to him. Now, I wasn't going to get... He doesn't the- strike out people. He's not really like a fantasy relevant pitcher, okay. but that makes people think that, oh, we'll stack against him. But I just, I mean, in general, that, that, you know, he's given up some home runs. Again, he pitches in Colorado, but like, you know, last time out, seven innings against the Mets at home, six innings, the game out before that against KC, he did give up a couple home runs in that one. Uh, Giants, Washington, he's just basically working deep into, I mean, he's been over six innings, uh, five and a third was the least he pitched in his last six starts, um, but he's working deep into games and hasn't given enough uh, power up to where I'm going to go, you know, att- I, I generally do this with Colorado guys. I don't like to to really overly play them, uh, either the stacks and, and off in the pitchers too, uh, even away from Colorado. So I, I'm just sort of off of this one personally. I, I just don't think it's a high enough priority for me, but if I did, it would be, it would be Lane Thomas, Nelson Cruz, and maybe a Washington mini stack or maybe a Colorado stack, but I, I just don't want to, I, I think there's a better spots to attack today personally. Yeah. Um, it's funny because you mentioned it's a big one. And yet what's weird is that I, I think I was, I think I was trying to make this this slate small a little bit. Um, I didn't even realize there was that many teams when I was looking through this. I, I, and usually when that happens, I I end up like taking all this chalk. So I'm I'm, I'm going to have to be very more open minded to other teams as we go through these analyses. But mm-hmm. but um, especially with with the Washington being, I don't, really only have like four teams I was really interested in right and, and from, the, from the hitting perspective and. One of them was Washington. <laughs> so um, let's, 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 let's see. Um, and then, then we're going to get to the now, another one, right? So Baltimore against Boston. Um, so you have two young pitchers and they, I think they've both shown flashes actually. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm still, uh, even though they scored 17 million runs last night, I'm still getting to Boston as one of the top options. I, I imagine they're going to be high owned. Um, yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm still getting to that. And I didn't really get to any of the pitchers and I really didn't get to Baltimore. Yeah, Boston is, I think over their last 10 games, they're averaging like almost 10 runs. Maybe actually, actually there's a little bit over 10 runs. Um, it's pretty wild. They scored 16 yesterday. They scored 16 three days ago. They scored 12 a couple of days before that. Um, I, I'm very high on Boston. I understand they're going to be popular. Maybe there's a way we, I can do a stack. And I actually, I think that would be the weird way to do it is to maybe pay up for pitching and play the bottom end of the stack for Boston. Uh, maybe with a Kike Hernandez, who's probably going to be one of the most popular players on the slate because of his price. But Verdugo is a guy people don't play. I think there's a ways you ways you could do it where I, it's a huge slate. So I don't want to worry about too much chalk, but yeah, Boston is going to end up being chalky. And I also think that Whitlock is in play here and uh, I'm not going to, I'm not, he's not going to play Bradish, but I think Whitlock is certainly in play. Uh, he's got a five and a half K prop. He's 6.8 K. Uh, we don't have any umpire information yet. I'll, I'll, I'll let that, you know, factor in somehow. But I, I'm I'm very high on 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 the Boston offense, and and if you're not going to play Whitlock like I'm going to do a little bit of, I do think that you can get to a lot of these Baltimore bats, um, Mountcastle, Odor, Cheap, uh, Santander, still you know three point four, Hayes, Mullins, everybody is sort of in play for me here, and I, I don't mind a stack even against Whitlock because we know the wide range of outcomes you're going to have with a young pitcher. We saw it the last time out; he just got batted around uh, in in the three innings he pitched against Seattle. Um, we've seen him also be really good at other times. So I'm sort of on a take some shots with Baltimore and play a little bit of Whitlock, but I definitely have Boston as one of my priority stacks. Uh, not my number one, but they are up there. Anything else from this one for you? Anything? No, no, we can move on this next game. Oh, so this is not in New York. There's anything in New York is not playing. There. There's no way. Right. Right. Um, right. It's bad, but it's, it's raining pretty good there. It's, it's going to, it's a disaster. There's no, yeah. Way. That's the Mrs. Sheets forecast, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So what do we think? So, so you've got, you know, Boston and New York, uh, Springs is a, is a decent ish, you know, young... yeah, Tampa. Well, no Yankees at Tampa. Is it Yankees at Tampa? Yeah. Springs. Well, sorry. What did I say? You said Boston at New York. I'm like, oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. New York at Tampa. Sorry. Uh, Springs is, has, has got some decent stuff. And the only thing I'd say about this game is, you know, who would have thought you could get a low owned Aaron judge, um against a lefty and what's what's his price like 7k now and he's 5600 and, oh, and, and it's in tampa but who cares because aaron judge hits the ball a million miles um i am I'm, I'm sort of like the idea of just an aaron judge one-off from this game and i wouldn't my i wouldn't certainly wouldn't fault anybody to, to have, have springs in their mix uh sort of in the same mold as whitlock was absolutely excellent last time against uh baltimore struck out seven and five and two-thirds uh has, didn't give up a run has only hasn't given up a run in his last few uh, last couple starts, including at, at Toronto, which is a tough matchup. And the Angels, he gave up. I guess he had three runs in that game, but hasn't really worked deep into a game. And I don't really know much of a leash he has, so probably not ideal for this slate. But is a guy who's on my list. And uh, uh, again, if you're not playing him, I, I do think that there is some value in taking just the Aaron Judge one off specifically. Nobody else particularly stands out for me from the Yankees' perspective. How about you? Yeah, I um. I wouldn't mind taking a shot at the Springs. Um, uh, again, if, if you're going to want to play Dodgers and, you know, stuff, or even Yankee, I mean, anything where you have to pay up, you, may, you might have to, it would be nice to be able to get to a, to a, a cheaper pitcher. Um, um, but there's probably a better one of those also. Um, but, Spr- but Springs is uh, projecting okay. I mean, mm-hmm. he's 6,300, and if you tell me he's got good stuff, and I, I have less than 10% ownership right now, which mm-hmm. gets the Yankees, he probably should be. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, think he, I, think he, I think he's in play here, actually. And, and you know what? As I'm looking at my board here, I, I want to I I backtrack a little bit and say that I, 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 I am agreeing with, uh, with Whitlock a little bit. I, I do think Whitlock's more in play than I was leading on as well. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, I think both he and Springs are, are, I think Whitlock is the one I would prefer of the two, but, um, one thing about this Yankee lineup is it's pretty, pretty trashy. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not an ideal lineup again. I mean, well, there's no Stanton, you know what I mean? Um, you do have LeMay who's supposed to be in the lineup today. 
but I, I just feel like, you know, there is the Yankees as much upside as they have, they do strike out. So Springs and judge are basically it for me in this game. Um, let's go to Philly and the Mets. And this is another one that you just said, nothing's going to play in New York. That's not going to play. So the Washington game is, is supposedly much worse than this game. If you want to oh, really? go for it. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, 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 it looks like there might be a delay. There's just, there is some wind blowing out here. Basically my feeling on this game is, is probably just to stay away. <laughs> um, I guess you could make a really good argument for the Met stack as at low ownership, <laughs> but like you said, you don't expect the games to play. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at the, the DFS stuff. They, they don't, they think, they think they, they, they're not as pessimistic as I am. I don't know. They, we, we were, we were, we had something that was going on tonight at 8, eight o'clock that was supposed to be outside. But they've already moved inside. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. We'll see. Interesting. Uh, okay. Let's, let's well, we'll have some, have fun though. If, if, the, if the, if this game does play, would you have any of Carrasco? No. Okay. Would you have any of this game to play? Uh, I think the Mets is a low on stack. And I mean, look, you're, you're, you're going to put Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso doesn't get played. And I know he doesn't hit a home run every day, but it sure feels like he does. At least every time I play him, for some reason, he hits a home run. <laughs> and I don't know. I, 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 I like the Alonzo one-off, I guess, if there was anything. But I also I also think the Mets stack is in play. But I'm probably, you know, I just think there's better spots to attack today than this. Hey, I would be remiss if I did not point out, by the way, this Colorado-Washington Colorado, thing, mm-hmm. is that even if the weather starts to improve, mm-hmm. I mean, Washington Washington's very fishy with respect to the way they treat their games. So, exactly. So, uh, so, so don't, don't, uh, don't, go, don't go nuts with that. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I totally agree with you. And that the only thing is that they're so fishy in the past that this year they've been a little bit more like. Oh, really? They've been making up playing. for it. Okay. They, had the, they had the Dodger one where they played in the rain the other day. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know. It's just I, just something to keep in mind. Nothing, nothing. I, I personally am not as high on the Washington game. I think people would would play some of that game if they think it's a go ahead. So I'm just good with staying away from the, the chalkiness in that one. Um what do you think about the next one, which I have is Cleveland Detroit, because I feel like this is another one, a big slate other than Shane Bieber. It feels like a cross off for me. And I think Shane Bieber is one of the best pitching arms on the slate. I don't think it's uh, really debatable. I think that he's got as good a stuff as anybody and he's facing Detroit and probably is, I'm not going to say he's the number one pitcher, but he might be the number one pitcher on this slate. Yeah, I have him. Um, Second best spend up, and that's pretty ridiculous. But um, well, I don't know. I, I, I have him as one of the. I look like three three spend ups, uh, um, and I have him as one of them. Um, I have him actually as the low, lowest owned. No, I, I don't have him as being exceedingly high owned though. Um, I have twenty five percent. My guess is he ends up higher than that. But again, I mean, the other guys are like. He's against Detroit, but then again, he has not been great. <laughs> well, I mean, that's you know, debatable. He's had some really good outings too. Um, and it's not like he's lost anything. I mean, he was great in his last no. outing. Um, and, and and we have we have uh, you know, again, this is a game that 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 probably should should play, but it may there's there may be a delay, so maybe that lowers the ownership on him. And if that happens, I'm certainly on board. If he's 25%. I think that's an awesome play. It's too, it's way too cheap, but that's the truth. He's just, he's a 10 K plus pitcher. He's facing the a team that, that strikes out a ton that, that doesn't have a whole lot of bats in their lineup that are going to make you scared. So I, I'm going to be very high on Bieber. Um, but I don't, nothing else in this game for you, right? Like, I mean, I guess you could make an argument for Cleveland or, and there's always an argument for Jose Ramirez, but yeah, I, I don't see any reason why we need to do that. I mean, Ramirez, Rosario, I guess they both make sense, but nothing else I really want to do here. Uh, me neither. But I do, I do, I do, I do want to actually, I guess I'll reiterate that I think Jose Ramirez is a tremendous like one off and maybe I'm going to have judge and Ramirez with one of my stacks because I, I don't think you're going to see, especially on judge. I don't think you're gonna see a whole lot of ownership there. Um, all right. Here is an interesting one. Uh, Miami, Atlanta, Look, Sheets, okay, I, I am usually on the – am I crazy? Because I don't think there's going to be any ownership at all on Ian Anderson, okay? Um, I think this is kind of an interesting spot to, to, to consider taking him. It, it's a high run total, great hitting weather in Atlanta, so sort of got the numbers mixed up. For some reason, Ian Anderson only has a 4.5K prop. I, I like the over on that. You also have Trevor Rogers, who's – I mean, Trevor Rogers has really good stuff, but is just can be all over the place. He's got a huge range of outcomes. He gives up tons of power. 
Um, he gets wild sometimes, but he also has upside. Um, I don't love this Atlanta lineup as a full stack, but I do think uh, maybe a mini stack, uh, Albies, um, Ozuna, if he plays. Uh, Duvall is a cheap part if you did make the full stack. Riley, I think that they're an interesting team to, to target because there's a bad bullpen behind Rodgers, and we know Rodgers has a wide range of outcomes. So I'm sort of sort of wishy-washy on this game. How about you? Yeah, I think I like Atlanta um, as as uh, as a stack here. Um, mm-hmm. You know, be, you know, behind the Dodgers, behind the Red Sox. You know, but 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 for looking for something else to do. If you're telling me it's also good hitting weather out there, um, I definitely do like Atlanta. And I just had no luck uh, with Ian Anderson myself, so uh, I don't I just think there are better options than him. But like you say, he is going to be low owned. I mean, that's for yeah. sure. Um, same, but, with, same uh, with Trevor Rogers, by the way, and this is not the same Atlanta lineup. You know what I mean? You've got, yeah, I know you've got no uh, Kuna in there. You've got no, I mean, Freddie Freeman obviously has been, is a Dodger now, but like, I, I just, you know, I, I could see, I could see Trevor Rogers having a nice, a nice game here. And he's got, I mean, he's got a nice, he's 7.4 K. He's got a five and a half K prop. He's good strikeout stuff in general. I probably am going to end up staying away from most of this game, but I, I do, I think, I think Atlanta is viable as I think both pitchers are viable, just a big slate. So probably going to go other directions myself. All right. What are your thoughts with this next one? Because as always, I think Minnesota is going to be overowned because they have so many cheap hitters. Um, I don't buy the early ownership projections particularly. And I think that Keller, as I always point out that, yeah, he can, he'll give up a home run here and there. He doesn't strike out a lot of people, um, but he's basically, you gives up two or three runs every game. It feels like. And uh, I just think that this is probably going to be a stay away for me. How about you? What about the Kansas City side? I think I prefer the Kansas City side to, to the Minnesota side. Um, um, so if, if, in, if, in fact, Minnesota gets, over, gets more ownership, I mean, I, I probably I, – I prefer, I prefer Kansas City. And, again, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm reaching here because I do think that those other – you know, the top options are pretty, pretty strong. But um, I think that KC alongside of – you say like Cleveland, but I, I can't just say I, I'm not seeing much ownership on Kansas City today. Yeah, other than other than Santana, because he's still minimum. Um, I don't think they are going to be a ton, there is going to be a ton of ownership on them. Uh, I think there will be like a little on Melendez. Maybe maybe you'll see some people with Ben attendees. Um, Ryan O'Hearn is two point five. You can go for you can go for Wit Wit again, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I think I think this, everything's fine. I just I don't think Ober is particularly bad and. You have a three point six run total on a team yeah. on a big slate. It's kind of hard for me to want to jump at it, but it's it's it's. I get it. I, I mean, there's the pricing makes sense to where you you could play two you know stud pitchers and get in a stack for KC. But I I just don't love this lineup. Um, maybe it's a little bit uh, because they haven't done anything. But look, look, look looking back on the board, maybe maybe your Cleveland is, is is pretty good actually. I mean, I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying to you know what I mean. I'm trying to get other teams in here. Maybe, mm-hmm. I, I was just thinking about Cleveland again. You know, what's crazy is how much the chalk has been hitting in baseball for lineups. Um, yesterday was a great example. I mean, partly the Dodgers have been crushing and the Boston's been crushing. And when that happens, you're just going to, I mean, if you don't play those teams, you're going to probably lose. So right. um, it, it's not, but then again, it's not going to stay like that forever. You're going to have teams just have these weird, bad outlier games. And uh, maybe that'll be the Dodgers tonight. Um, Cause we're going to get to them in a little bit, but how, how is, um, how is Woodruff? I mean, we go to the Milwaukee, St. Louis. How does Woodruff compare to these other uh, these other spend ups in your in your eyes? Between you know, you got Bieber, Verlander. You know what I mean? How, how is Woodruff in that in that same class, or you think he's a little he's a little bit weaker? No, I think he's an I think he's an excellent option, and I don't think he's going to be particularly high owned. I think people are a little afraid of him. St. Louis doesn't strike out a ton. Um, uh, it does it doesn't really bother me? I think Woodruff has enough good stuff. I mean. He did only strike out two of these guys in five innings. I think he's a little behind the other guys for me, but because of the ownership, I'm going to bump him up a little bit. And at the same time, um, am I crazy for thinking Dakota Hudson's in play at 5,400? I don't you, think that's you, you had him um, as a decent play at some point recently. Yeah. I forget when. But, he, but, uh, he, he was good against Arizona earlier this okay, year. Okay. Okay. And he put up 23 in that game. Um, 5,400 against Milwaukee it seems. Seems like something we might want to take a shot at because there's going to be another 5,500 pitcher that's really good. Maybe maybe you double pay down for, with those guys if you want to get the big bats. And I think Hudson is definitely in play. No, I don't know. 
<laughs> Only a three and a half K prop on him, which is not exactly. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not as down on Milwaukee. I, I think Milwaukee could get. I, I uh, Yelich, Yelich has got his his stuff going. I think too. I don't know. It's a tough team. Yeah, I, I have no fear about the Milwaukee lineup personally, but I know they've had some good outings this year. But I, I personally don't mind attacking them, and I always like taking pitchers in St. Louis in general because they're it's not a great hitters park. Um, let me see the temperature right now. It's 68 degrees there, so not 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 great hitting conditions. Um, I, yeah. I, I, anyway, I, I'm into both these pitchers. I, I don't have any interest in the bats in this game at all. And are you into Milwaukee? No. Okay. Um, I like this Hudson idea. Just the, the the double spend down has worked out really well. Even yeah. like yesterday, it worked even when they sucked. You yeah. know what I mean, it still was. Yeah. You had you had the winners. And by the way, Corbin on all the winning lineup sheets. Every, everybody, if you want a tournament, was Pat, had Pat Corbin in it, and, and it felt like crazy to, to recommend him yesterday, but it worked. Yep. Um, all right, Toronto and the Angels, I am probably going, like, oh, I don't know what to do. I love Manoa. I think he's got incredible stuff. I think he's uh, going to be an all-star probably every year the rest of his career. Uh, the Angels are, are nothing to, to sneeze at. They're, they're a real lineup. They're, they're solid. Uh, only a five and a half K prop for Manoa, which you don't see very, that low very often. I also like Silseth stuff. Um, I think he's going to be a good pitcher as well. I, I just think this is mostly a stay away. Although I'm just going to keep reiterating that you're going to see me probably with just weird one-offs from Toronto, basically every night. Um, I just think they have, they have too much power in this lineup. Uh, Vlad hit his homer the last couple games. Like, I like Vlad quite a bit as a one-off, but not interested in the stacks personally. How about I don't you? know. I might have some weird five offs from Toronto in this game. I kind of like ooh, that. I, I kind of like Toronto here. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, Celtics has good stuff, but he's still, you know, he's still young. Yeah. You know, and and you know, Toronto, uh, like you said, they have those bats, and they they're they're prone to get on one of those runs and get Danny Jansen in there too, and Guerrero, Springer, Bichette, Hernandez play a bunch of these guys again, just any, anything to, to anything except for Dodgers and, and Red Sox is something I want to look into. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and I think Toronto's right up there in that list. Uh, I, I think that the, I think that the angels, I don't, I, I don't really get, I'm not really getting to them. Um, and yeah, I don't, I'm not quite getting to Manoa. I, I just, just cause of price, I think. And just because of um, the other options, but, Certainly not going to argue with you. I mean, he certainly has that. You know, he could put up thirty in any game. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe that is the idea. You know, maybe maybe, maybe hope that Trout sits or something. <laughs> he certainly is an interesting option anyway, just because no one's going to play him. And and, I, and it's, I I do think there's something to this Toronto thing though that we should probably be be playing at least some of them. I don't think you necessarily need to fully stack them, but like if you play like Vlad, Bichette, and Springer with a Dodger stack, and you take two cheap pitchers or with a, a, pod, a, a Boston or even if any other stack that you like that's chalky, you're just going to be way off the board. <laughs> like nobody's going to play any of these guys. And look, Springer and, and Vlad just hit home runs every day. And <laughs> I don't know why we wouldn't want to play that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe a mini stack for Toronto is, is where I'm at at least. Um, I actually like that quite a bit. All right, Sheets. Now we get to it. I guess I'll let you start this one off. Um, <laughs> what, are, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, we've, got, we've got the Bumgarner. I, as, I've, as I've mentioned, he absolutely has owned the Dodgers historically. He actually pitched not, he didn't pitch well in the last time they played. He did, that they, you know, he, he did nothing from a fantasy perspective. He had three runs in five innings. He didn't give up any home runs. The Dodgers have continued to struggle against off-speed lefties. Uh, and that's the only thing they struggle with. They hit everybody else. The Dodgers are an awesome stack. And I don't, uh, I disagree that they're going to be popular because of the pricing. I, I just don't think they're going to be that owned. So I, uh, I have the Dodgers as the number one team to score the most runs. The, 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 by the way, the roof is open today for a rarity because it's a big deal. The Dodgers playing in Arizona. So you have the roof open. Um, I like this Dodger stack. And also you can play guys like Bellinger who no one's going to play. I just, I just think that they're an awesome stack tonight. Yeah, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to play them. Um, and that's not, and, and remember, we're talking about two different things. They, um, they're going to project as the best stack. Um, 
I want to say by a lot, but between them and the Red Sox, those two are going to protect as the best stacks for me. You by had the Dodgers. I'm looking at, I mean, I'm looking at Saber Sim even right now. And even they've got what I, what I think will happen is I don't think these guys end up crazy owned, which am I, am I nuts for thinking that? I yeah. just don't think people can play them. I don't see how they can fit them in. It's really hard. I, to I don't know. I mean, they're going to, everybody's going to play John Gray, you know, along with That's these what's guys. Gonna happen. You know? That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Thing. But what about if you play John Gray and Dakota Hudson? Well, then you, then you can play him also. I mean, like, you know, like, but I, mean, I, 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 I have the Red Sox currently as the chalkiest. Um, yep. And then I have the, Do- and then I just have the Dodgers next. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, so that's how I say, I'd love to, I'd love to get off of these and, 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 you know, you, it doesn't take a lot for me to fade a team that scored 16 runs in this last game, you know, so. But they do it every night. <laughs> no, yeah, shut out by Fetty the day before. Only, only Fetty was the, was the, but that was, I mean, that was a getaway day with no Mookie and no, their lineup wasn't the same. This is a Friday in Arizona, which is not exactly a rivalry, but like it's a division game. They, they tend to bring their best. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look for any excuse to not play them. So, so with 16 runs in the last game and, and, and the bum garter yeah. sneaky lefty thing, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, I'll, I'll get to them and I'll probably get a ton of them in, in, in builds and stuff like that. So I'll play them. But in my big buy-ins, I'm probably I'm, I'm gonna do something else. I mean, yeah, I, I, they're, they're, they're the best play, but I'm just not gonna do it. I'll probably play Toronto. Or something. Yeah, I get it. I just think they're gonna be so low owned on DraftKings. I think they're gonna be crazy popular on on FanDuel. That, um, uh, that 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 that's for sure. We'll see. We'll we'll see about the DraftKings. I I just think they're gonna be way lower. And we, and we don't we we're not we're not playing Pepe on at, at 9900. No, even though I like the kid's talent, I just don't think that that's even the conversation really. Okay. Um. Well, you have probably the best pitcher. I guess he's the best pitcher in baseball still. Um, he just never gives up any runs. Who, who, Mar- who Martin Perez? Um, other than Martin Perez, uh, Justin Verlander, I mean, he, he hasn't given up a run in, what is it, three consecutive starts? Uh, it's his last, he's, he's going to catch up with, uh, with, Kofa, with uh, sorry, with Drysdale uh, and then Hershiser. Uh, what's that, 14, 20, 19 innings? No, now he's at 22. What do, you have, what do you have, 53, though, Kershiser or something? What's that? 50, what was 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 59. I was there actually 59. at the game. Yeah. Um, uh, as a kid. Uh, the, so Verlander is, I mean, look, he's the best pitcher in baseball at the moment until further notice. Um, and I think he's a phenomenal. Has, 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 has he, has he given up some of the strikeout uh, upside though? Uh, to be a better pitcher. Maybe you could say yeah. that he has. Um, sure. I guess you could say that. Um, he hasn't had the, the monster outing, but he's always in 20 to 35 range. And <laughs> sure is. these days, that's pretty good. I, I think he's, I think he's an awesome play. There's a, plenty of other options if you want to pivot off of them, but I think he's an awesome play. Yep. Uh, I have him right up there. Yep. Uh, see how ownership kind of plays out on him. Uh, you like any of the hitting in this game? I, I'm, I'm really not getting to either. Of them, no, I, I think that Houston, like, so Flexen will give up home runs sometimes. By the way, like I'm just going to mention that Flexen at 5,300 is probably not the worst thing you could do um, if you wanted to go with the double spend up thing. Uh, he's a real life pitcher that actually has a leash if he pitches well. And, you know, even if he gets you 10 fantasy points, that might be good enough as we, as we witnessed yesterday. Um, and he certainly could, he could go out there and get 15 or 20 uh, if things go his way. Uh, but I, I don't, I'm not, talk, I'm not, I'm not going to play him, but I don't, I don't, not overly excited about Houston either. Uh, I do think Jordan Alvarez as a one-off um, or Kyle Tucker, but I, I don't really have a lot of love for this situation. Okay. All right. Pittsburgh, San Diego. Uh, you have another one who's a really good option. Uh, I mean, we, look, we've always seen the up, up and downs of, of Manaya, And this year it's been much more in the upward direction as, as far as overall numbers go. Uh, certainly has a ceiling. It still hasn't really like been that like in real life, like he's given up a lot of runs and uh, he's given up a lot of home runs, by the way, too. It is Pittsburgh. Uh, Manaya is going to be popular. If he stays as popular as it's currently projected, I probably will fade him, but I think he's a really reasonable option. And I like some of these San Diego bats today. Um, Machado being my favorite. Uh, I think Will Myers at 3K is interesting. I think Luke Voigt at, at 2.9. I don't mind a little bit of a stack here against Quintana, who's just simply not the same guy. If you look at Quintana's, you know, game log, he had his two awesome outings in, in there. Um, actually, just three good good ones against Milwaukee. He was really good against the Dodgers. He owned the Dodgers completely. Um, 
but I just, I, I don't know. I, I think maybe it's more of a mini stack, but I do think San Diego mini stack does make some sense here today. How about you? I like Manaya as one of those top pitchers, him and, and, and Verlander and Bieber, um, you know, those are, those are SP ones uh, yep. and probably not going to be able to play both at two of them without making some serious, serious concessions with your hitting. Um, so I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to probably play one of them with some, some, something cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I didn't quite get to the Padres, but I'll, I'll definitely take another look at that. Cause I think Quintana, yeah, I think, Maybe you're right. Maybe he's a guy that you can get, you can get to a little bit. So for me, it's just going to be, for now, just Matt and I are from this game. And uh, I'll take another look at San Diego. Yeah, one thing I don't like about this game that I want to throw out there is that I don't like this weather that it's 62 degrees in San Diego, which I don't know what's happening in California. We have this, it's 100 degrees where I am yesterday, today, and I went down for a, for a friend's birthday uh, last night, and it was 50 degrees 10 miles away. So 50 degree change, it's just really weird weather in California right now. Um, but it's 62 degrees and wind blowing in from left. So it's a little bit, has me a little bit less higher on the pot, higher on the Padres than I was before I looked at the weather. Um, all right, Texas and Oakland, uh, you're right. I think a lot of people are gonna play John Gray. I have no issue with playing John Gray. And at the same time, I have no issue with playing Cole Irvin. Um, sort of not an, not an overly exciting guy, but another guy who, who allows us to do some things. Um, and I think that he is another one of those six, you know, along with the Whitlock and Springer, uh, sorry, Springs. I think that he's, he belongs in that conversation as well. Um, and he pitched really well against Texas last time, put up 21 fantasy points. Uh, that would certainly do the trick for me tonight. So I, I'm high on both of these pitchers and not very interested in the hitting in this game. Yeah, I think John Gray is going to be um, pretty popular. Um for all the reasons I mentioned, I mean, you want going to want to play some of these high price guys and you just, it's going to be hard to do with these other two, these, these two studs up here. So I think, I think that Gray is going to be very popular. And, um, and Cole Irvin is, is, as you mentioned, I mean, he's not going to project as well, but I think he's, he's got sneaky leverage in a lot of different ways. You know, it's, 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 it's the price leverage. It's even the same game leverage, you know, it's, it's like, um, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of in there. I mean, who's, who, who died and said that um, either of these teams can hit, you know what I mean? Um, right. So uh, I, I'm, I'm in there. I think Cole Irvin could be, and, and I'll say this is that if you are, if you're, if you're struggling or whatever, I mean, if you could somehow, I don't know how you could pivot because you're not going to have any of these guys, you know, if you're, if you're struggling and it's going to be nine and it's nine forty. And you have Dodgers, you could probably like swap one Dodger for another one and go from Gray to Cole Irvin, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 be a little different. I think that's not the worst idea in the world to just to keep that as in your in your in your quiver. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I agree with everything you said there. Um, I think it's a good a good point about late swap and something that we should focus on in general. Um I, I, you know, I, I it's I don't like to be the chalky guy in general, and I don't want to do that, but look. I've been doing well, so it's been working for me. I'll, I'll take it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I do like that. I do have the Dodgers in Boston as my number, my top stacks on the slate. I'm going to be using my side st secondary stacks as Atlanta, Baltimore, Toronto, and San Diego. Um, I think San Diego is a little bit of a downgrade over the other ones, but I love the Toronto idea. I love the Baltimore idea and the, and the Atlanta just best hitting weather on the slate in Atlanta. It just has me kind of interested in, I don't want to say both sides. I mean, I guess, I guess like it's hard for me to find bats. I really like on Miami, I guess, but I, I just want to take advantage of the weather of the hitting conditions and maybe Rogers is bad today, but mostly I'm looking at it as a mini stack. Um, and I think that those secondary stacks that I have are going to be fairly low owned. Um, also the early projections are always a little bit off. So keep that in mind that maybe the Dodgers and, uh, and, and will be higher owned on DraftKings than I currently have them listed as, but I think it's going to be spread out ownership tonight. What did you have any uh, difference on on FanDuel as opposed to Draft, except for the fact that you can get the Dodgers in a lot easier over there? It's so easy to get them in over there. Um, that's my main takeaway on FanDuel. Um, let me just double check my pitchers over there. I would go. I would go back. I would play more Toronto over there as well. Yeah, I think that's and and, and the cool thing about like because you want to play you know if you want to play Freeman in your in your Dodger stacks even in the lefty lefty, um, you might want to get to uh, 
to play Freeman. You could play, uh, you know, the Freeman in the same lineup as Vlad on, on, on FanDuel, which you can't do on DraftKings. And you, the guy who never gets owned on, on draft on FanDuel is Will, Will Smith. And, uh, but uh, on FanDuel, I've pretty much most of the things the same. I think it's weird that Manaya is getting more ownership than Verlander um, or similar on DraftKings and higher on FanDuel. I don't think you need the extra thousand that much. I think Bieber is probably the most the chalkiest option on, on FanDuel. I think I would go ahead and, and make Verlander my priority pitcher on FanDuel. Um, and, you know, just because of the ownership and then followed by Bieber. And I just feel like Verlander is so secure right like when does he not have a quality start has he yeah has he not ha- he's had one non-quality start this year I don't even know what happened in that game against Washington but uh, it's just the only time this year he hasn't hasn't and, and then there was the first game where they were just sort of easing him in but it, it's just it feels like a lock to me almost to not play him in every lineup but he's just how does he fail really yeah so that's yeah the I golf mean. is going to be an interesting sweat between whether it goes it's whether it's even or plus one I think that's the big sweat for today I think it's gonna, yeah, I think right gonna, now, right now, like 50, 50. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really uh, drastically changed. And I actually have some nice, some nice, uh, some nice golf lineups going that I didn't, uh, didn't look like that yesterday, but I also said in chat and hopefully people heard and hopefully it, we'll see if it pays off or not, but I said, it's a good time to bet Hovland. Uh, well, I put three names in there and they, all the guys had big days today so far. So oh, nice. hopefully, uh, hopefully that continues. All right, cheats. Uh, I think, uh, are you going to be around? I think you're out tonight, right? No, I, I, uh, no, I should be okay. Oh, awesome. Okay. Well, I'll see you in a few hours and good luck to everybody. We will see you at six Eastern. All right. See you then.